right, uh, where were we last? Oh yeah, long reach. So last week, um, just after I last done a bit of filming, the fish started spawning at the other end. So packed up, called it a day, and uh, we decided we'd give them a good couple of weeks off to rest. And uh, I gave them a good bit of grub before I left. And then I come back this week and thought, oh, I'll have a little holiday on the meadow. Um, it's been doing the odd fish lately. And I thought, whilst I'm up here, I can go and keep trickling bait into long reach, you know. I've um, never really used bait as my advantage on, on there, so I thought whilst it's shut, you know, I can kind of give a few little spots, a good bit of bait, and hopefully that'll give me an advantage um, when we go back on there. Anyway, so I got down the meadow yesterday, um, had a good look about, considered going in the long reach bit, because there had been some fish showing over there, but there'd also been fish showing out in the middle. Um, my mate Steve's over on the tea bar and he'd been seeing quite a few out in front of him. Um, so I thought, right, well, this swim round on the road banks done me proud before, so uh, I'll come in here. So I came in here, uh, put four rods out, sort of between 80 and 100 yards, scattered them around, and then put a couple of kilos of bait out with a throwing stick. And I had seen a couple in here, sort of uh, in the afternoon, sort of one at a range and one only about 60 yards out. So knew there was fish in the vicinity. Um, didn't go to bed till about one o'clock. It was one of them nights where I had a buzz on, you know. <laughs> and then I set my alarm for half four, got up at half four, sitting there watching the water. See a bird come across and it dived down where, roughly where one of my rods was. And I had a bleep on that, but then within seconds I had a bleep on the other one and the bird was sort of about 20 foot away from that. So I thought, oh, that must have been a liner. And I was just on my second cup of tea of the day. And one of them's gone. So I grabbed that, playing that in, and literally I'd only been playing it in about, I don't know, well, a minute or so, I reckon. And uh, I put my GoPro on my head. And the other rod's absolutely ripped off. I'll say the other rod, one of the other rods is absolutely ripped off. And I'm playing this other one in and there's got a little one on, on the rest going, zzz, 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 rod's it bending around, this braid on there, so it's proper savage, isn't it? I'm trying to loosen it off, but then that's too loose, trying to tighten up, then that's too tight. And I'm trying to concentrate on what I'm doing. Oh my God, what a hairy old uh, 10 minutes. <sighs> so, got my first ever Meadows Common. Never caught a common out of here before. And uh, got a mirror as well. I'm not sure exactly how big they are yet. I haven't had a proper look. It's been uh, <laughs> absolutely buzzing. I like, don't, don't know what's hit me. <laughs> so yeah, proper result. Anyway, right, they're in the net. So I'm going to leave them there for a minute. Let them have a little rest. Get two new rigs knocked up and uh, get them back out there. Because obviously it's a little window of opportunity here that I've got to take advantage of. Um, yeah, let's do it. First one, 32 and a half pound common. Mega cup. Oh, light's not the best round here, is it? As you can see, stunning creature. Awesome condition. The old commons are pretty rare in here, so uh, yeah, it's nice to get to meet one. Happy blooming days. I reckon the other one might even be a 32. Old Chinese dentist in a double take, two thirty. Yeah, yeah, boy, mega chuffed. Result. One last little look. Rude not to really, isn't it? Especially if she's being so well behaved. <laughs> awesome. Go on the old dorsal. What a cold creature. Chuffed. Right, there you go, Gil. Well, 
Wow, look at this for a mega Meadows mirror. 34 pound, just over. Lovely clean one. This fish in here is so cool. Got a mega sheen on them. That's uh, because they hardly ever get caught, you know. And there's still loads in here that haven't actually been caught. And it's doing some real big ones. God knows how many 40s are in here now. So, gonna be a crazy place in the future. Well, it's already a crazy place now. Gordy had the uh, foresight to stop this place quite a long time ago. And uh, yeah, thanks mate, because you've done a mega job. Box of chocolates, love it. <laughs> well, as I was playing this one in, there's a mussel hanging off the line, a massive great swan mussel, and I'm just thinking, oh no. <laughs> what if that just slices through? But luckily it didn't. <laughs> awesome. Still buzzing, not even had any coffee this morning. And only on, what, three and a half hours sleep. Um, yeah, proper result that. It's 100 odd acres this lake and these fish don't give themselves up easily, you know. There's a hell of a lot of nights that go in, uh, rod hours if you like, for, uh, for each fish. Obviously at this time of year, it seems like there's, you know, there's a few more coming out than usual. It's that old duffer's fortnight, isn't it? Sort of two weeks before they start spawning, tend to have a little munch up and become a little bit more catchable. Um, so yeah, chuffed. So I actually started off last night with two solid bags and two on spinners, but by about 11 o'clock I'd had a couple of little pulls on the solid bags. I sort of tipped a small look bait off of a few maggots. So uh, yeah, obviously I knew that they'd been yanked about by eels, so decided that wasn't the one, whipped them in put spinners on them, um, the old faithful IBs, and put about two kilos of bait out with a frying stick. I actually had to wait literally till half 10, 11 o'clock before I could even do that. The seagulls were relentless. Even in darkness, they're still managing to get them. Right? There's swarms of them. Every time you think they're gone, you know, you pick up the old stick, put a couple out and bang, there's 20, 30 seagulls appear from nowhere. So um, yeah, had to wait really late for that. Smothered the bait in loads of smart liquid as well. And you know, I think when you put it on it, just before putting them out, or you know, like it was on for a couple of hours marinating, if you like, I think um, a fair bit of it kind of washes off as it goes through the water. And I think that gets into the water column and then drifts off with the undertow and can really help sort of draw the fish in certainly doesn't hurt, that's for sure. Um, but I think, you know, what I normally do is soak them up beforehand, get them out of the freezer, give them a good old uh, coating, and then kind of let that dry a little bit. And then I'll add more before I put them out. Um, and then obviously the stuff that's dried a little bit gets all the way to the bottom and releases everything uh, from there. One little thing, this little tip I've wanted to talk about for quite a while now, because, uh, so something that's going to save you money. If you use spinner rigs and you use these little hook beads and kickers, um, they add up, you know, and if you're using quite a few of them, it gets quite expensive. So what I do to reuse them is get my old rig, get a little pair of pliers, magpie behind me, hopefully there's more than one, and then just crimp down the barb and then you can just slide off that hook bead and then slide off the kicker and reuse them. So the hook beads, obviously they get a little bit looser. So if you want to reuse them, which I still do, I put two of them on instead of one. Um, and yeah, that's enough to grip it, because obviously it's a little bit loose and you 
whack it out hard. You don't want that um, swivel slip around onto the hook, onto the bend of the hook, if you like. So yeah, two of them, the old recycled ones, will keep it in place. And a recycled kicker is good, good for a few fish normally before they start getting a little bit worn. So yeah, save yourself some money, recycle your bits and bobs. Well, I don't know why, but I've turned into a insomniac. On, you know, insomniac, easy for you to say. Uh, the last couple of nights, just couldn't nod off last night. Um, it was quite warm, a few mozzies. I should have put my mozzie mess on, um, but yeah. I literally don't think I've had more than about 20 minutes sleep all night. But the good news is I've got another cup. Um, about, I don't know, what, about an hour before it got light. Not even that, actually, 40 minutes before it got light, because I had an incredible sunrise this morning. Well, actually, it was before the sunrise. It was probably 45 minutes before the sun came up, but the colours in the sky were just out of this world. Amazing, beautiful light and colour. Um, so, yeah, that was a real treat to well, not wake up to, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, anyway, yeah, like I said, like, R3, um, left hand rod is absolutely ripped off. Like, I picked up the rod, and because I'm using braid, I'm so used to just tightening up the clutch and flicking on the anti reverse. Um, well, I've got to get out of that habit. <laughs> I was just back I didn't even have a chance to, un, uh, you know, to loosen off the, the anti, uh, sorry, the, the clutch because it was just tearing off and I was just like winding backwards as fast as I could <laughs> for about 60 or 70 yards I reckon it was like well last time I had something like that it was I was marlin fishing in Thailand <laughs> it was extreme um, and now yeah, I've got a lovely long mid 30 mirror so yeah give it another 15 minutes or so that light get a bit better and we'll get him out and have a look at him. I say him because he is a him. Um, I might have even caught it before actually. It looked a little bit familiar. But it was dark so I uh, didn't have a proper look. But yeah, buzzing. <laughs> and obviously, you know, we're just at kind of peak bite time now. Or well, yesterday's peak bite time. But this lake in general, any time in the next sort of couple of hours, three hours. There's a chance of a bite, you know. Um, even if you're not seeing them, it seems. But yesterday morning, I hadn't actually seen any fish show in my zone, so to get them bites out of the blue like that just proves to you that sometimes you do have to sit on your hands and uh, sit through bite time, regardless of whether you've seen them. A lesson for me, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, right, mental. Come on the brown. Go the brown, text your legs Let's be having ya. Look at that for a mega carp. Lovely long one. Definitely a male in. 
just starting to get the old spawning tubercles. The scrap was absolutely ridiculous. Literally just tore off about 70 yards of line because I'm not used to the old uh, braid, you know, I'm just not used to fishing with a clutch, playing with a clutch. So yeah, I have to get used to that for sure because he caught me out. <sighs> what a cool creature, buzzing. <sighs> Lovely. Just got to get, keep your hand in front of their face. <laughs> Apparently it's the same with otters. When otters realise that once they've got their, you know, they get in front of their face, that's when they start killing them. That's when they become much better hunters rather than just grabbing their tails. Well, he's more than ready to go home. What a carp. Lovely. Go on in, mate. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, it's been a quiet old day over here today as far as shows are concerned. I've literally seen three, I think. Um, one of them wasn't a million miles away. But yeah, the wind's been banging over the other side today. Uh, it has been quite chilly and quite strong. I'm pretty sure that, you know, at this time of year, they, they want to spawn and they want to be warm. So I can imagine them not sort of, not hanging about on the end of that wind if they were to get on it at all. So I'm still feeling pretty confident on the back of it here. I must admit, I know it sounds a bit stupid, but getting a bit bored of this view already. <laughs> Um, 48 hours in a swim and I start to get a bit like, I don't know, I fancy a change. I'm, I'm one of them people, you know, variety is the spice of life. And, and also once my rods are out, I always think, oh, there's a chance I don't actually want to leave my swim. I'm not really one of these people who just winds in and goes for a walk each day. Um, maybe I should get myself a little carp dog, so I have to. So yeah, um, obviously I'm not going anywhere. I am going to be sitting it out, certainly tonight. Um, I've been putting sort of six baits out at a time every half hour or so. That's all I can get out before the seagulls appear. And I'll probably give it another sort of kilo or so tonight. But I'll tell you what, I know this sounds a bit pathetic. My arm is killing me. First session of the year using a throwing stick and it's all kind of like maximum throwing stick range. And my poor little arms just ain't used to it. <laughs> <laughs> that and lifting 30 pounders up each morning. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. Um, just got to get my old arm in training, and I. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, like I said, it's going to be sitting tight. There's plenty of big ones out in here that are well due out, and uh, especially the brown, because I was just talking to someone actually, and I don't think it officially came out last year from what I know of, unless anyone else knows different. Feel free to drop me a message or put something in the comments below. Um, but yeah, it got hooked, foul hooked, should I say, by a pike angler in September. And it was just under 48 pound. Aside from that, I don't think it came out last year. And it's normally one of the more friendly fish in the lake. So it's definitely well due. It likes its bait. So best I'll get some more out there. And uh, hopefully it's gonna be one of the next ones along, but like I say, you just never know with this lake. I reckon there could easily be a couple of real major surprises in it. You know, potentially upper 40s, scraper 50s that might not have even been caught before. You know, they were stocked quite a long time ago and looking at how the others are growing, you know, there's always one or two that shoots ahead of the others. So, rich old place, every chance of it. Come on, the uncaught monster.
Well, this morning I woke up and uh, it was flat calm, really sunny. I was lacking in sleep massively. So uh, I turned my alarm off and went back to bed. And got up, wasn't feeling it around there. Three nights in one swim, that was enough for me. I needed to get out of there and uh, yeah, needed a, a new vista. I wasn't ready to go home, the weather's far too good for that. Um, so I had a good look about, baited up the spots on long reach that I wanted to get baited up, ready for next week, and come on to the meadow. And I was chatting to a guy uh, called John, I stood in his swim for a little while, um, first time I've met him. And then I caught one out of the corner of my eye, just to see one out to the left. I thought, well, that's definitely a carp, <laughs> buzzes on. So uh, yeah, I've, I've went and stood on the far end bank where I could see all of this area and I saw probably about five or six within about 20 minutes, not even that, 15 minutes. So I was like, right, that's it. They weren't in a particular area, they were sort of spread about this zone. So uh, yeah, I've got around here as quickly as possible, um, wanged out four single IBs for now and I'll put out some bait with a stick later on but the wind's banging in here it's like typical textbook carpy conditions and I'm buzzing <laughs> yeah proper buzzing <laughs> oh shit I better get my net set up <laughs> Well, I don't like swearing on carp angle because, you know, the youngsters might be watching it and all of that, but me. <laughs> These rods have been out there about 20 minutes and one of them's just dropped back to the floor, cranked into it. <sighs> mega, mega, big pit scrap. Got kited down the left, tried getting these reeds. I've got my GoPro on, so I've got a bit of the footage and uh, whew, it's hairy old stuff playing them on that braid, isn't it? I think I'm starting to get a bit used to it now, but anyway, forget all that. We've got a chunk. We've got a proper chunk. Oh man, it might even be a 40 pounder. <laughs> right, I need to get that rod back out ASAP. And then, uh, yeah, I'll, go, I'll put him in a sling for now, actually. I wouldn't want him getting out. And then, yeah, get the rod back out and we'll have a look at him. <laughs> Buzzing. She's a big girl. <laughs> She's definitely a big girl. Could be a big 4 0. Let's find out. Oh, God, big blimey. God, holy sh. Forty-four pound, ten ounces. Shit. God, it's massive. <laughs> oh, kid in the sweet shop. Well, I knew she was big. I didn't think she was that big. Oh, biggest one I've had for quite a while. <laughs> Look at that. So I've got to move back to get it all in shot. Forty-four pound, ten ounces of prime Meadows mirror. <laughs> 
Look at the condition of that. That is absolutely insane. Buzzing, absolutely buzzing. Wow. You can have a kiss, mate. Mwah. Look at the scales on the back there, lovely little row. Massive width, lovely purpley hue. <laughs> Javi is happy. Ooh, proper old waves coming in here. Mega bit of carpy weather. And how's about that <laughs> for a mega, mega carp? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, Reed's upstaging you. Look at that. Awesome. Lovely times. All right then, girl. Got a mega mouth, haven't you? Ain't been caught much. I think I might have seen a picture of it before, though. That single scale in the middle there, ringing a bell. We've got another one. This is going a bit mental over here, isn't it? Oy. I stripped off about 40 yards, 50 yards to start with. <sighs> right, I need to get my waders on, don't I? It's waders o'clock. She's going. Oh. Why doesn't someone make some waders easier to get into? Feels heavy. Very heavy and powerful. It's going off. One man went to mow, went to mow a meadow. One man and his rods went to mow a meadow. Oh, mate, this is. Excuse my French. Very powerful, very heavy. And the brown is well due out. And apparently that life's a ruck as well. I'm on these other lines. Oh, almost feels like it's caught on something, but. I think it's just heavy. Oh. Oh, I don't know, maybe he has found something. Feels a bit odd. I don't want to pull too hard. Oh, it's off again. 
definitely something. I don't know whether it's just weed or what. There's not really any weed left in here. Well, not left, not any weed growing up this year because of the blue dye. Oh, God, it's pulling hard. Come on, girl. Why is that not feeling quite right? Are you just super heavy? Or are you stuck on something? Oh. I don't think it's stuck because it is moving. It's pulling offline. I think she's just a whale. We've got a hippo. Here she comes. Come on, girl. Golden brown texture like sun. Never a frown with golden brown. Mate, does it get much more carpy than this? Jesus Christ. It's off the carpometer. CAF, bro. CAF. Right, where are you? Mate, this is so heavy. So heavy. Is it going to be the brown? Oh my god, I think it is. <laughs> it's got the lump. It's got the lump. It's got the size. It's in the net. Is it in the net? It's in the net. It's in the net. It's in the f***ing net. Golden brown texture like sun. <laughs> We've got it, we've got it, <laughs> we've got the brown. No way, no way. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> don't believe it, I don't believe it. <laughs> the brown is in town, <laughs> it's in my net. Wow, it's definitely heavy. It's very, heavy. very, very heavy. She is a big old girl. Special old carp, this one. Been around for many years, isn't it, Martin? Woo, look at that belly. That big round tail, look at that. Is that why it's called the round brown? <laughs> it's got a big round tail, brown tail. Looks... Well, last out September, foul hooked by a pike angler, and it was big. And now it's definitely big. Whew. Who's going to read it? You are. Go on, yeah, and you, John might be able to get in behind and see it as a. Well. Oh, go on, I got it. This is zero, is it? Yeah. It is. 50 pounds, hey. 50 pound, 8 ounces. Yes! Hey. Oh. <laughs> 50 pounder. <laughs> wow, cheers, oh, mate. Well done. Cheers, mate. Wow, I've still got this on my finger. <laughs> wow. Look at that. She is huge. 
ancient, lovely old carp. Wow. One I dearly wanted to catch and I was going to come and have a proper go for it at some point, but got lucky whilst having a break on long reach whilst they spawn. Unbelievable. Right, because she's so big, we're going to get her straight in the water and do some water shots because uh, she's got a big old belly on her. She's probably full of eggs and uh, yeah, I'd, I'd feel safer with her in the lake than I would on the bank. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Speechless. This is the first time this has gone 50 pounds. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Jesus, Joseph and Mary. Now that is what you call a big car. Special one, that. Shout out to me, mate, Scott from Ireland. Can't pronounce his surname. Locha, 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 locha. Uh, the other night I granted him a wish and his wish was for me to catch this and uh, there we go. <laughs> Cheers Scott. <laughs> Legend. Oh, wow. Wow. Look at him. Uh, sorry. Sorry girl. Unbelievable. Simply unbelievable. <sighs> right, I need a rest. I'm sure she does too. There you go girl. Get yourself a little drop of water and we'll have another go in a second. <laughs> right, go in a sec. <clears throat> oh, my wrist, mate. <laughs> yeah. Losing strength in that wrist. To do a terry on. There you go. Right, I'm going to say farewell to this amazing old carp. Thank you very much. Mwah. Can have one of them. Not many carp get them, so I feel special. <laughs> Cheers. Nice one. There she goes. Go on, girl. You got this. Oh, that was me pushing her up then. <laughs> Come on. Let's have a strong one. Go on, you can't go now. Promise ya. There she goes. Not that way. That way. <laughs> yes. Go on, girl. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, yo. All right, people, how do you fancy winning a St. Ives Eight Lake season ticket? Now, this is something you can't even buy because there's a waiting list at the moment. So, yeah, we've got one to give away. Massive thanks to Gordy for uh, contributing this prize to us. It's worth £600, so it's a high value, value prize, and like I say, it is an absolutely awesome complex. Probably my favourite complex in the country that I've fished so far. Loads of big fish to go at, loads of water. Um, like I say, Gordy's a really nice guy who runs it, and all the anglers around there, very friendly bunch of people. Um, nice social that goes on there. Some of the lakes have got barbecues in nearly every swim, <laughs> so you don't even have to take your own barbecue. Um, but yeah, if you fancy winning yourselves one of them tickets, all you've got to do is get yourself a gold card subscription um, this month, which costs £7.99. We'll be doing the draw at the beginning of March, so between now and then, anyone who's got a gold card subscription will go into that draw. Even if you only want to 
go into the draw and then cancel it afterwards. You can cancel these subscriptions anytime you like, just at the click of a couple of buttons. That's a real simple process. And uh, yeah, hopefully you don't want it. Hopefully you'll continue subscription. But as I said, you know, if you did fancy getting into a draw with pretty good chances, the old odds and that, compared to some of these other draws out there, then uh, get yourself a gold card membership at carpankle.tv. Thanks for watching. Big up yourselves. Easy now.